Hi everybody, Tim Hughes here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of DLA Night. With me today, I've got James, sorry, George Muir. Sorry, George. Um, and um, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about humanizing society through omni-working. And we're going to talk about the future of work and um, where we're all going to sit and where we're not going to sit and stuff like that. But before we get into that, so that, George, um, tell people where they can get hold of you. Well, of course, you can get me through my LinkedIn um, profile, George Muir. It's, there's not that, that many of them. Um, Twitter is GE Muir. Um, my website is udelkn.com. Um, it's a Gaelic name, so um, but you just search for George Muir and there's not that many about. This. If you really search for me, George Edward Muir, Sweden, or George Edward Muir, Ikea, you usually find me in my old blog posts and stuff like that. So, so I, I, you, you've had such a, a fun. Well, you've had such a wonderful life. Here, here we are. Um, I know from the fact that you've got a Scottish accent, but I also know that you live in in Sweden. Yes. Um, and at, so, so how did you get to be here and talking about omni working and a Scotsman in Sweden wearing yellow glasses? Come on, tell us. So. A crazy short version, um, you're right, I'm Scottish, but I've uh, actually lived in Sweden longer than I've lived in Scotland. So um, what really happened is uh, I left uni uh, really, really young, at 20, started off doing research for a company in Edinburgh, doing lots of crazy things and being able to do things with PCs before PCs were invented. And uh, I actually tested windows for, for, for Bill Gates Wow. A long, so, and it was actually a print driver. So it's, I've done a lot of things. And then I was asked if I could come out and help a company called IKEA yeah. in 1990 for a week. Yeah. It was a bloody long week. I was there for 27 years, did many, many things. Um, started off doing really setting up East Europe, then moving to the headquarters with the design companies. But really, what I was doing is I was basically trying to help create concepts and talk about where we're going to be in about five, seven years. I ended up being the CT, uh, CTO and the and IT manager and all, all this governance, and then had a crash and had six months to live, basically tried to save the world and decided to, you know, took a year out. It was a year after 9-11. I was just basically in and out of airplanes, not knowing where I was, caught a cold, and that was me, knocked over. Um, changed my life completely and decided to move back and use the other side of my brain, and the one that works, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, and move, move into more of the people and the humanistic side of things. Yeah. So it was really di di difficult because everybody saw me with this IT tattoo on my forehead, but basically what I was doing was trying to think about the people side. And for here, what I got was the, 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 the possibility to actually talk about digital workplace and create something called digital workplace and give everybody a digital identity. Mm. And I was the first person to do well, first person to do that for Microsoft uh, over the whole world. Um, so that was 155,000 Microsoft licenses and built it up. And ultimately what happened was I got into this role as my as a futurist to uh, create a, a better workplace and actually futurize and, and actually dis design how will we work in the future. By doing that, I stepped on everybody's toes. And I mean everybody's toes. Yeah. And, um, which is good because that's what I was meant to do. I was meant to stretch the envelope. And um, I went through maybe six, seven, eight different evolutions within IKEA and then decided now it's time to give up. Uh, I've had enough of this. Um, it was a bit crazy. It was, it was driving me crazy, really. And, but I loved IKEA. I loved the spirit. I loved the feeling. I loved the culture. I loved that way of working. And what happens is, is then I, I moved into AI and I started working as a futurist for that kind of stuff, which then took me to another place, which was working with startups. So then I have this difference between a corporate and a small company and, and, and everything else. And so what I'm doing now is basically I'm, I'm building on all my, my things in the past. And I think differently. The yellow glasses is because I'm dyslexic. And I right. wasn't able to read a book when I was younger. Um, I still have difficulties reading a book, but the yellow glasses help. But what it does for me is, is I'm able to see things in completely different ways. And yeah. I'm recognized for the fact that I can see things that nobody can see at all. And I can join the dots in a different way. So what I'm doing now, I mean, after COVID or during COVID and whatever we want to call it, what I'm trying to do now is to try, I'm actually trying to work out what are we going to do next? What is yeah. the wrong thing? And listen to everything else and really 
basically, I've spent most of my last, let's say, 20 years in PowerPoint and, and doing keynotes and talking. And, and now I've moved really into this idea of let's stop the, all the bullshit. Let's start thinking and listening to everybody else. And let's start thinking of humans and putting humans in the center of this. And how do you want to live? How do you want to work? And then we've come up with this term called omni-working, which is basically omni-living. It's how do we, how do we, and I mean we, not me, we as a society change to work in the future. And is that because we've seen the the the, the work and 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 our lives basically merge? You know, you can see my house, I can see your house. Um, you know, there may be dogs walking in or or children or whatever. Is that is that that merger? Yeah, or well, in effect, we, we went from what we called work life blend. Yeah. Or a work life, actually, before that was called work, work life balance. And before that, it was work in the industrial ages. Then it became work life uh, balance, where you can balance life from work. And then you come with this blend. And then it became the blend has disappeared. Really, it's disappeared. And there are people who really want to say, This is, I'm, I, I wear a shirt when I'm working and I don't when I'm not working. I wear a suit or whatever. And then I've heard, People saying, I can only work in the office. But nowadays, what's the office? The office isn't a workplace. In fact, I think the ter terminology office will disappear. So it really is about the fact that how do we actually take control of our life? Because the first thing that disappears in our life is our free time because we, we work more or we want to impress somebody more. It's, and we, we have no idea how to manage our lives. And we definitely don't know how to manage our lives when we have nothing to do. So I think that um, what what um, the, the workforce in the past were just seen as the workforce. Yeah. Um, and now what's happened is that um, we actually know more about them because people would come to work. But you wouldn't necessarily know that the person sitting next to you had a, a nonverbal autistic child. You would know that they, that they maybe they had more struggles at home than, than you did. But you wouldn't necessarily. But now you would actually probably know that. Many companies before COVID was really, you were actually working for on a, what we can call a presence model. Right. If you were there, then you were deemed you were working. Yeah. And what's, what's interesting is a lot of people who are working just now are sitting on a Teams meeting or a Zoom meeting, and every two minutes they push the mouse just to show that they're active. Mm -hmm. So what's something that, that, that it's not – Again, there's not one size fits all. There's not one picture here. But we're seeing a lot more of humans and understanding that I can't do this just now because there's somebody behind me. My, my children are working at school or not at school. or I am. Not, I, I mean, my wife's sitting in that room doing a, a, a webinar just now as well. So we have, we have to balance things in a different way. We're in an office. You were able to say, well, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. So everything has changed and everything has gone up. And the other thing that's really come into play it's health. Right, yes. Nobody cared that monkeys about your health, really. Yep. The um, of course, there was rules and statutory rules and everything else to make sure everything's clean. But nobody really worried about the fact that you were not feeling well or whatever, unless you were in one of these really, really good companies that cared about people. Today, it's come up and it's number one in the agenda. And health is not solved through digital presence. Mm. Health is solved through leadership and understanding and people working together. And I, and I think that um, there's been a number of health issues um, uh, that have come across because of, of, of COVID, plus the fact that we're, we're, I think we're now more aware of it. Um, and this, this, this merger of, of, of life and, and, and office, and I'm guessing all of these things are kind of becoming together as a perfect storm. They say, okay, this is where you say, what we need to do is place humans at the center. And, and really, I, I take that step one bit further forward. Okay. I say we, we decide when we want to work, what do we want to work with, who do we want to work with, and where do we want to work. Yeah. So it's not just um, it's about me. It's about me and my team. And when's the right time for me and my team to do the work? Do we want to work in the same place? Do we want to work virtually? Do we want to meet up? Do we want to go in a cafe or whatever? So it's not I mean, I'm thinking a little bit of the next next steps so it's really taking that around and then companies who people who own companies have to understand that if you don't provide the ability and the capability for me to decide right we're going to be working on uh, thursday afternoon and we're going to take it in this hotel place and and, and 
South London, and there's going to be 15 of us, and we're going to be there for, and we're going to do our work there because we need to do something special. Yeah. And if you can't provide that, then they'll leave. Yes. Yeah. The capabilities of, you know, before we talked about the 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 war on uh, uh, skills and the war, the, basically that type of thinking. Nowadays, we're going to move that. The, there is no compassion towards a company unless the, the, the company is a caring company and it cares about humans. And it's yeah. not just about, oh, I can get nice food or whatever. It's really about the whole package, about how I want to work. I remember when I did a, a presentation about 15 years ago where somebody saw that at IKEA, we, we allowed you to take, well, we allowed that at that point in time, I don't know if they still do, but that we allowed if you're taking your child to school for the for, on the first day to take a day off. Right. And people went, you can't do that. Why not? Why can't you do that? Because we think and understand, at that point in time, it's about thinking and understanding how do you and your family fit into that. If you if you went to a, you're working with three or four people and you said, can I take, I'm going to take Jimmy to school today. Is that okay? It's okay, that thing. But when you get in a bigger corporation, it doesn't seem to work. It has to work. And if we don't, if, if we don't think about it that way, then people will move on because we've seen just now is with the advent of, of COVID, it actually shows that we can be flexible. Yes. And we can work at different times. And if you have to work together, then you don't have to work eight to eight to five. In fact, people are working the craziest hours, which is another issue. And we need to talk about that as well. How yeah. do you manage, manage your work um, time? But it's really, it, if you can't provide as a business the ability to to allow people to work when they want and and trust them, this word trust doesn't exist in a lot of businesses. If, once you trust your employees and, and, and go from employees to, to co-workers and you realise that you're all working together, you've got a different situation. And I think also bringing into that is the fact that we, we're now, there's an expectation, real expectation because of globalization, that we will have a, a far greater diverse um, uh, workforce. But but we could also have, there's no reason why people can't work from different places. My partner's 25-year-old. Um, he he uh, got a job during lockdown. So he was interviewed online. His first day of work was online. Um, I think they actually got into the office once. But um, he's um, sitting in a flat in Croydon, but he's saying, well, I can go and work in, in Barcelona. Yeah. And no and, and, why I can't. And I, so the other thing I'm doing just now is, that, you know, so before COVID, I was doing keynote speeches. At the beginning of COVID, I was doing webinars and I was doing lots of these kind of things. And uh, lately, I've, I've been back to keynote speeches. But I've been really focusing lately on Clubhouse. Right. Okay. Yes. So Clubhouse is, uh, and this is another twist on working on. Instead of going in and saying I have all the answers, I don't have all the answers. Nobody has all the answers. But what I try to do is I try to show possible scenarios. But what we're doing in Clubhouse, and this is together with one of my colleagues, uh, Chris Kane, yeah. we've, we've, we have this room called uh, called um, Who's Moved Our Cheese. Okay. Yeah. Who's moving the cheese? Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring in people's questions to help people to understand the questions because understanding other people's questions actually gives you a real understanding of what's going on. And in the first couple of weeks, we've got people from Canada, Canada coming in, America coming in, Australia coming in. Uh, yes, uh, yes, it's every Tuesday at, at, uh, at 3 o'clock uh, Central European time. Mm -hmm. um, we had people from Holland coming in. So so everybody's coming in and, and the accents and the diversity of the questions yeah. It's fantastic, and we're allowing. So we're not keeping a, a, a frame, which is you know, it's really about future of work. But I mean, we've gone from um, things such as mini cities as opposed to cities to sustainability to is working from home sustainable to you name it. So we're going all over the place. And what we're what the, the idea behind here is is to try to provide sometime maybe every quarter. Uh, an, an analysis of people's challenges and right. how people co are conceiving these kind of challenges and moving this forward. So it's another way of working. And under because when I talk about omni work, everybody goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then somebody talks about fractalization and somebody talks about uh, we work and everything. So we're getting all these different things and 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 taking it beyond this hybrid discussion into it's not hybrid. It's a it's about a new way of life okay. and humanizing life. 
And and where do you? Uh, but I, I love Clubhouse. I think it's a fantastic way of sharing ideas and meeting new people. Um, and I, and I'm glad that there's a, that discussion taking place. Where, where do you think this is? You know, in using your um, um, your futurist goggles, um, where do you think this is going in terms of um, the, the where we're going to work and how organisations need to actually grasp this this humanisation? Well, I think. So the, the challenge is that there will not be one size fits all. Okay. So first of all, I would say if if before COVID you would think ninety percent of people worked in an office, mm. once this finishes up, I think maybe thirty percent of people will work there. Okay. Yes. The okay. rest of us will um, have. Um, I think there'll be a, maybe a, a bigger focus on community working, so community centres or. Um, Job, I wouldn't call it job sharing, but place sharing. So a, a place, an office for you know, uh, um, office on demand or space on demand or whatever you want to call it. But an, a, an office place. I think the word office will disappear because I think that's a strange word anyway. Yeah. A, a meeting place will come into play. So like hotels will become business centres. Yeah. And in fact, that was happening in Sweden. Um, before COVID, anyway, we yep. used to meet up in hotels instead of going to uh, into, into in, in London before COVID. The whole all hotels were you just people were sitting working, yeah. And and so I think what you'll get is you'll you'll get this this part of the omni working effect. I'm going to work today. I'm going to work on my own. I can't work at home because there's something else going on. So I need to find someplace else. And they will and in the in the local villages and town centres and everything else which are ghost towns anyway, they will start to take old buildings or buildings that are shopping centres that are not being used yep. and they'll start to refurbish them to have more office on demand. Right. And uh, uh, So the, the lady that we're working with and are talking to in, in Canada has this thing called fractal buildings. And basically it is renting a piece of space for an hour, a day, a week, whatever, and coming in and using it and, and having a dynamic way of working. So right. I think some of us will do that. Some of us will be in the office place. Some of us will have to work from home because the CFO has realized I can save so much money. Yep. So you're working from home. Those people work from home for a bit, but they will transition. They will yep. not you can't work from home forever. So you're going so everything will be moving to more towards what I would call this omni working. So you decide together where, when, and how I want to work. Right. That's, that is a way to move forward. So it's not just uh, flex, working from home one day, working in the office the other day. I, I mean, I, the, the, one of my friends from Holland was talking, and he said he goes into the office, which or the, the, the workplace, not to, to work. He goes in there this week to meet other people. Yeah, He's not going in there to sit in a cubicle on Teams all day, but I've seen other people who go into the, the workplace and yeah. certain teams. And yeah. going, oh, you can that do that at home. You can do that at home, and it's not. And actually, it's better to do it at home than to do it there because then you. So it, you, if you're going, if you're going, I mean, like, we did this at IKEA. We changed the name of the office to a meeting place. Right. And I think that's what we have to think about: meeting places, eating places, dynamic places thinking places and so we'll, we'll get places that are you know a box which will turn into all these different things and what we will do and what we need to do is then think about my my health and our yeah. health because we some of us would work until the cows came home and we still would be working and some of us have realized you know there you can only do so much and i mean yep, i agree so you have to really start thinking about how do I work and what do I want to work with? And we can use artificial intelligence to help us in that way, but really it's getting back into our discipline. What will happen, I hope, will be a new form of leadership. Right. So team leadership, which is not management, and, and I and I usually say I think management will disappear, as we right. know it. It has to disappear, it will have to reform, and it yeah. will be a different type of leadership. There will be a digital leadership, there will be a connectivity leadership, There'll be an engagement leadership. So we'll get these, instead of what we call silos this way or silos this way, we start to create a network, a network of, of teams going down across and through each other. And we need to turn that way of working and think more in terms of network. And a network can expand and contract. So it could be that your, your company is two people 
on one week and 250 the next week yeah. and two and a half million the week after because you're contracting depending on the activity and the work you're working on. So there's a lot more dynamics going to happen in the future. And um, that means that you may, you may work for two hours a week or you may work for 50 mm. or more. Mm. George, this... Oh, I've gone. Oh, yeah. oh I've gone. I'm back again. Sorry. Sorry. George, uh, it's fascinating, and, and, and I could talk all day about it, I um, mean, the, the possibilities. And I totally agree with you. We need to be in a situation where we have different choices in terms of where we work. And um, there's so much um, awareness now about mental health that we that the human has to be the centre of this. And, and I think what we have to do, really, is not just say, yeah, we need to start talking about it. Yeah. We have to start meeting about it. And yeah. really, what I was asked last week was, are you creating a movement? And I thought about it, and I'm going, actually, we are. This yeah. is a movement. This has to be a movement. This cannot be yeah. done through policy. This has to be people working together and saying, this is how we want to manage our lives and understand that, you know, you can't turn back time. You, can, you know, once you get to a certain point, you can't mm -hmm. turn back again. So really, it's about understanding what can we get out of life. And really, it's about life. And really throwing away the old books, the crinkly old men who said you have to work nine to five. It's getting rid of that attitude. I agree. About let's have a life. Yeah. I agree. Fantastic. Th thank you so much, George, for coming on and sharing that with us. Right. Um, and, I, and I still think it's amazing that um, you've still got your Scottish accent after all these years. Isn't it? Well, I can move to Swedish. It's not a problem. <laughs> George, th thank you so much. Remind people where they can get hold of you. Yeah. Okay. Get me at um, udelkian.com, LinkedIn, jo George Edward Muir, um, GE Muir at Twitter, and come to um, the, the clubhouse on a Tuesday at um, 3 o'clock Central European, 2 o'clock uh, UK time. Okay. Who's moving my cheese? Is Who's moving my cheese? I'm going to check it out. I'm going to go and look and check it out after this. Okay. Take okay. care. George, thank you so much for today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.